welcome back to the channel. Today uh, I will be covering the difference between a zoo and a sanctuary and before we fully begin um, I just want to let you know I'm currently on my bed because I'm not really feeling that well so uh, I still wanted to upload a video. I wanted to be uh, thorough today but after I film um, I'm probably gonna take a nap <laughs> but uh yeah that is what the setting is if the camera keeps on moving it's because i'm trying to keep it steady since it is on my bed so it's not like a stable kind of situation i'm trying my best but so my name is aquari doyle my purpose here on youtube is to provide educational animal related videos so that way me and my team can open up our very own animal rescue center here in the near future so if you're interested in that animal loving journey be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, that way you're notified by every single video that we post, which is usually every single day. Be sure to check the description down below for my research that I did for this video, as well as the Humane Society events page, which is only virtual events online right now, as well as all the donation links they have for all the animal-related organizations. So yeah, let's get into the video. So I want to discuss that there are many circumstances for zoos and sanctuaries. There can be a really terrible sanctuary. It just depends on the obviously circumstance and the right mindset. So let's say, cause zoos are something most people don't really think of when they think of animal rescue. They mainly put it in the category of sanctuaries which is why PETA is kind of trying to get rid of zoos. But the zoo in my state, the Wildlife World Zoo in Arizona, um, knows that PETA is trying to close down all zoos and they're like actively trying to do it. So they're trying to change their name to Wildlife World Sanctuary. So that way they don't get removed. That being said, let's discuss what's the difference between a good zoo and a bad zoo. So a good zoo, for example, takes care of their animals, doesn't strip them from the wild, and will plan on releasing them back into the wild. Some zoos do this, and let's go over what a bad zoo is. So a bad zoo would strip from the wild purposely just to put them on display, uh, treat the animals badly. Let's say that they don't treat the animal badly, so it's still a bad situation because they're stripping them from the wild anyway. And that they will not release the animal no matter what. Because um, they, they plan on using that animal to the zoo's benefit. Okay, so there's another uh, piece to this that I do want to discuss. There are wildlife rehabilitation centers, which are similar to sanctuaries but we're gonna go over the differences as well so i'm just gonna add just that in the same video because why not it's kind of the same thing so let's discuss the difference between all three so zoos i found from many different sources so i'm looking at my notes down below zoos are open to the public so so we as the paying customer uh, will go to the zoo and um, they will profit off of us going to the zoo. So that is what that means by being open, being open to the public. You can go in and look at all the animals, uh, which means in turn that all the animals are caged. Um, I did also find out that most zoos breed their animals in order to produce more animals within the zoo so that way they just don't run out. Um, they also trade animals within zoos. They, um, yeah, I don't know why that would need explaining. They just literally trade animals from zoo to a different zoo. Another big thing that zoos actually do is that they allow the guests to actually go ahead and touch animals. So I'm talking about like a little petting zoo. Uh, you touch the animals and you feed them and uh, that is what that means. Uh, in my 
experience at the World Wildlife World Zoo in Arizona, um, they have peacocks and all sorts of different birds running wild, as well as they have a train ride where you can experience wildlife around you out in the open. So they are able to come near you, but you're encouraged to not put your hand out because they have ostrich birds out there and they will literally snap your fingers off. Um, it's obviously not a safety hazard because the birds don't ever do that. They just follow the train, if anything, but it's been running for so long that they're kind of used to it. So the main reason zoos are zoos is because they want to educate the public. So when um, families, people, just people come into the zoo, um, their goal is to teach them about animals that they will probably not see in the wild on their own, so that way they are educated um, on their own when they go. So let's go over two small things, well three, technically three, um, three small things that are good about the zoo. Let's just take a moment to actually appreciate zoos. So um, one of the fact is some have species survival programs. These are kind of like um, rescue centers where they, they help animals and um, just animals really benefit from it. Um, not all of the zoos have this, only just uh, some. And that zoos actually feed the correct diets in order for the animals to properly survive as if they would be surviving in the wild. Um, that is the diet that they base that on. And they actually do keep that animal, no matter what animal it is throughout the zoo, they will keep those animals until they actually pass. They do not plan on releasing the animals to the wild and that goes for most zoos and I did discuss in the beginning of this video that they they would release there are some zoos out there that actually do release animals into the wild um, but not not all of them and this is uh, one last thing that we're gonna cover for zoos and this is the huge problem that everyone's talking about why zoos are bad and it's the fact that there is not enough room for each animal Yes, I can definitely see that this is a problem. Um, and I keep on bringing up the, the Wildlife World Zoo in my state, but like that's literally the only example that I can provide because I've been there so many times. And I'm not talking about like recently, I've been there uh, throughout the years of my childhood. So it's a popular zoo to actually go to because it's the biggest zoo in the state. Um, when I do go there, or when I did go there, um, you do tend to see that their areas are just not that big, and to survive for their entire life in such a small area is kind of sad because, I mean, think of us. Think of it as us. We get to travel a lot as human beings. We're not just trapped in a small place all the time and this is just excluding the fact that we had to be in quarantine okay this is not that that is just literally as human beings we have the right to travel we have the right to like go out and do things why are animals different you know they should have the right to do that too and for the fact that zoos are like stripping animals from the wild is kind of unfortunate and kind of disappointing so now let's go over sanctuaries. So sanctuaries um, are typically non-profit. So they do function um, not from the government, I believe, but don't quote me on that. Um, it was kind of hard to read what that was, um, but in a nutshell, they are supposed to be non-profit organizations like any sanctuary. Um, they do not do animal trades at all. In fact, what a sanctuary is essentially is an animal rescue center for local animals. 
and we're not talking about dogs and cats because that no <laughs> we're talking about local animals as in wildlife like absolutely any animal um wildlife well technically more of the exotic animals um like more of the wild animals not the domesticated like house cats or dogs uh, we're talking more wild animals animals are placed in sanctuaries because they have like certain examples but um, they are not be they are not able to survive on their own in the wild. That is one really good example of why an animal would be in a sanctuary. And then that sanctuary would try to tend to um, the animal's, uh, let's say, wounds in order to heal, in order to go back into the wild. And if they are well enough to go back into the wild, they go back into the wild. Uh, they do... Um, release the animals back into the wild once they are uh, better. They also do not breed their animals. They rescue all of their animals, so it would be quite convenient if they happen to cross um, more than one animal, a male and female, at the same time, or I don't know. It just they're not supposed to be breeding. Sanctuaries are not breeding centers. They're not, um, they're supposed to release animals back into the wild. They're more humane than zoos are. Um, and I'm not saying that all sanctuaries are good and have good intentions because, um, let's be real, there are some evil people out there doing the wrong thing. So I'm pretty sure there's at least one sanctuary out there that's just not doing the right, the right thing. No, I don't believe that. So they actually do uh, have people visit. And I believe the reason they have people visit is because it is a nonprofit organization. So they kind of need to have funding in order to keep it open and to own all that land because what I'm going to discuss right now is that um, every animal that they have has a large amount of space to roam. So that way they're not trapped in a smaller uh, box shaped um, confinement like a zoo would. So a big difference between a zoo and a sanctuary is that sanctuaries actually have a larger amount of uh, space for animals to roam and be happier because I feel as if they deserve that. I don't know. I'm more humane than any a lot of people when it comes to animals. A lot of people, you'd be surprised, don't actually care. And yes, they actually do allow their visitors to touch certain animals and I didn't really look too much into this, but um, I'm I'm figuring that it is a petting zoo as well, if they actually have something like that. Um, but I wouldn't see all sanctuaries having visitors being able to touch animals because it does depend on the animals that they have. It's not always a guarantee that they'll have those animals considering the fact that they will let that animal back into the wild. So yeah, I wouldn't say that all of them would unless they're just obviously a bad sanctuary. They're not essentially a sanctuary, they're just a zoo. And that's basically the difference between a zoo and a sanctuary, but I'm going to add rehabilitation center at the very end, which I'm going to be talking about right now. So a rehabilitation center um, taking injured local wild animals, which is kind of similar to sanctuaries, but in a way sanctuaries can actually get wild animals that aren't necessarily local. They can have them um, from somewhere farther. Uh, but rehabilitation centers are strictly for local wild animals. And they do not have visitors. That is not a public place to go in and enjoy the sight of animals. It is specifically to help heal these animals. And they will 100% return to the wild if that animal is able to. And they obviously at that point do not breed. So yeah. And 
I'm not really sure what they do with an animal if they cannot return it to the wild. I believe they would just give it to a sanctuary that they know and trust. Uh, but rehabilitation centers do not actually um, have people visit and um, they might have their own setup where they have animals stationed and they have enough room, but but that's pretty much it. I just wanted to discuss the difference between those because it is kind of confusing to know the difference because they can have a lot of similarities and they kind of sound the same because you can visit both of them. And it's just like, well, what is the difference if you're like able to visit them and educate yourself at the same time? Well, I guess it does at the end of the day depend on your mindset on the zoo and sanctuaries like owners and staff's mindset. If they have the right thing in mind, they could be considered one or the other. It depends. So um, that is why PETA is trying to shut down all zoos. And I just, I personally believe that it depends on the mindset and the cir circumstance because literally what I just told you at the beginning, my local, well not local because it takes like two hours to get there, um, the Wildlife World Zoo, um, they just want to change the zoo to sanctuary and send, and just be Wildlife World Sanctuary instead and PETA can't go against them because they changed their name. So if they were a bad place, um, they can't really go after them because they changed their name to a sanctuary and they're not going against sanctuaries. So yeah. That is my piece on that. I have all the research that I did down below in the description. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of get that confused by bio and description. So uh, yeah, make sure you check that out. And I will see you tomorrow. Be sure to check out our TikTok page. I will be posting loads more content on there that you will not see on my Instagram or on this uh, YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. Uh, follow us because we do post daily content on there. Daily. But that being said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.